aside, I'd like to let everyone know that <clears throat> everyone that came up here, every little thing they said, I was going to say it all in one, so I ain't going to be long, trust me. It'll be really short on my end. Um, I'd like to thank my family, you know, uh, the people that supported me. Also, you know, the legacy of the fighters that they came up and is here, the Mayweather's, the floor and stuff. You know, when you look at all, I, all the comrades, I would say, amongst fighters, in any weight class, um, when it's all said and done, if your career is over, or that your time, if you made it to that, that class of Hall of Fame, or legendary status, or icons, even, even that is important. But one thing that I realize a lot is that loyalty comes in time, not by what you say in the speech, not by what you say at the moment, but in time, all of us will be tested. That's in sports, life, relationships. And I stick to that. Whether you agree or disagree, I understand the best defense in life is a great offense. I use that in my personal life. I've never been back to anybody's penitentiary in three decades. And I'm not being braggadocious about it. I'm just letting you know that everybody in here, even non fighters, women and women, have a story. Whatever story that you feel, that you can remember, no matter how old and how young, that define who you are today, belts, no belts, beaches, and no that is your defining, defining moment that made you who you are or what you want to be. The reason I can sit or stand here tonight and speak the way I speak and represent the way I represent myself, my family, and then my community because a good defense and a good offense. Hit, not get hit. And a lot of people here who had the job to cover us as fighters, as we climb up the ladder to be great, or to dare to be great, couldn't understand my style. Couldn't understand a lot of fighters' style in this room. But my style is paying benefits to me, to my family now, to be able to understand them. And for, and for them to be understand and you, me. So it wasn't a bad idea, Duncan more than I take, wasn't it? So won't be long, I promise. I'd like to thank the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame, my family, my sisters, the ones that couldn't make it, couldn't make it, my family, aunts, uncles, people that stood way in the back in life and watched me grow as a man, which is very important, and then become a business. And I want to say one thing to the fight world. I want to say two things to my comrades. I started off with a dream. That I didn't turn into a dream of seed or a dream of dope. See, I know words are important. I know words can get you to see. When you dream it, you don't get the work behind it. You come and just see the dream. And I look at it 30 years later. 1988, my first professional fight in Atlantic City with Clinton Mitchell Resort Casino, and I lost a four round split decision. That was in 88. If you look at any of my beginning of my trap, beginning of my journey, you will see 88, 89, and 90 inactive. After that first defeat in 1988, I was off of boxing, not thinking about boxing, really dumb with boxing. I was on the street heavy in Philadelphia, big city. But I still had about eight years of parole to walk off, but I was gambling. 
and it took a friend, a schoolmate, mother begging and pleading for me to do something for her so she could do something for me. And that struck something in my head about what I don't know now as a 54 year old, 40, 54, year, 54 year old adult that I knew then, which I had in me, is that this wasn't what I wanted to do or be. And I, I can say what I get into details, I stopped. And I went back to the drawing board. And there's a trainer named Bowie Fisher, mm -hmm. who probably won't be in anybody Hall of Fame because he didn't have five or six champions, but he had me. And he promised me, and I promised him that I would be in the gym every day, and we had a, we really had a decades of contests. Who's going to not be in the gym to say, I got you? I'm so glad that I didn't give up. I'm so glad that I'm here to be last speak. Drop the mic when I'm finished. <laughs> say that everyone here that think that defense ain't a good offense, you can ask one of the greats, Mayweather. That we can sit here and articulate and dialogue with anybody at any level, any degree, and not embarrass ourselves or our family, which is first, and then who we represent. So I would say to everyone, thank you. If you think that the fighters that understand, everyone won't get it that just label us in the box as just a professional fighter is a foolish thing for some of us. Can't speak for all. We will represent ourselves individually, whether you're the East Coast, West Coast, Midwest, or anywhere in the world, we will represent ourselves, and that will be the blueprint of how we will be remembering our legacy and not just for boxing. At least I can speak for Bernard Hopkins Jr. Because the legacy now goes to what? It goes to what I establish now in this era for my family and their kids, the dynasty of success. It must start with the first person in our family, in our community, to be the first one to change the, the ignorance of not knowing not a color, not whether you're smart or you're not, or you got a Harvard or a Yale degree, but someone that understands that we are not only people, but we must look out for ourselves first, because I'm not expecting anyone in here, if I can't pay my bills, to give me a dime. And I will risk myself, all my earnings, to understand to stand on the principle and live off the interest me long-term wealth, bloodline of wealth. What is that? That's three generations from now that ain't being taught to us. We, the Mayweather's, myself, we gotta teach our community the way that y'all already been taught and already been in Thank you. Thank you very much. Give it up again to Bernard Hopkins, our final inductee tonight. I want to thank all of you for coming out to support all the inductees. Congratulations to the 2019 class.